Amen. We give God the praise, give God the glory, give God the honor on this blessed Sunday morning. Amen. The first Sunday in February. We thank God for bringing us another month and another new day. Amen. To give his name the praise and give his name the glory and to give his name the honor. We welcome you to the Mount Carey Missionary Baptist Church located 3835 Whitewater Road right here in the city of Valdosta, Georgia. God is doing great and awesome things and he's truly worthy to be praised. Let us go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. God, we just give you glory. And God, we just give you honor on this blessed Sunday morning. Thank you, Father, for how you brought us all week long to this present time. And God, you allowed our golden moments to roll on. Do you be the glory? Do you be the praise for that blessing on this morning? God, we just thank you for being able to come to share your word and share this worship experience with your people on this day, oh God. We thank you for them, oh God. Whatever way they are seeing this and hearing this, of you in this broadcast telecast, God. We ask you just bless them right now, Father God. Dip them down in your power and your anointing, God. You know what they stand in need of right now, God. We ask you to bless them in a real good way, oh Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we lift them up, oh God. We pray, Lord, that you will have your way, oh God, in this service on today. That you move by your power, by your spirit, and by your anointing, oh God. As we even give you the glory, we give you the praise, and we give you the honor on this blessed Sunday morning. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. 
In the hands of the Lord, because truly he will make it all right. Amen. I say he will make it all right. And we just leave it in the hands of Almighty God. We say welcome again to the Greater Mount Care Missionary Baptist Church, located 3835 Whitewater Road, right here in the city of Valdosta, Georgia. Amen. We encourage you to invite a friend, share this link, and share this, amen, Facebook Live with family and friends that amen, they may be able to hear the word and, amen, be part of the worship experience here at Calvary. We encourage you to do so on this day. We say happy birthday to all those that celebrate in the month of February and certainly want to say amen. We want to continue to celebrate uh, Black History Month of the month of February as well. Join us for each and every Wednesday night for Wednesday night word on live live stream at 7 o'clock p.m. each and every Wednesday night. Remember conference call Sunday school is at 920 on each Sunday. You can dial the number 701-802- Five three three seven. That's it. It's Conference Call Sunday School nine twenty East Sunday seven zero one eight zero two five three three seven. And the access code is six eight three one two zero five. That's six eight three one two zero five. And the pound symbol. Join us on each and every Sunday at ten fifteen a.m. for our morning worship service here at Calvary live stream. The link is www.worshipwithmtcalvary.org forward slash live. You may give your tithes and offering by downloading the application Givelify to your phone or your smart amen device. Amen. And the link to join us is to give your offering is www.worshipwithmtcalvary.org forward slash giving. Amen. You may you also drop off your tithes and offering to our designated deacons in the front parking area amen, on Sundays from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. That's from 10 a.m. today to 11 a.m. In addition, you can pick up your communion supply sacraments for the first Sunday, amen, during this time as well, amen. Please continue to pray one for another, special prayer for the following, Mother Lily McDougal, amen, Mother uh, Elizabeth Brown, Minister Edward McDougal, Brother Robert McDougal, amen, Deaconess Ber uh, Bertha Manio, Sister Joanne Kaya, Brother Andy Hart, Minister Eric Curtin, and Brother Arthur Barton and Brother Reginald Black, and also, amen, Sister Little, amen, Mike Dougal, amen, Sister, amen, Little uh, Mike Dougal, amen, pray for her as well, amen, the daughter of uh, Minister Edward Mike Dougal as well, amen. Thank you for your thoughts and prayers to the family and the loss of their loved one, amen, and continue to thank you for the, your thoughts and prayers and the loss of their loved one. For the late Mr. William Gary Cooper, he is the father of very own member, Sister Deaconess Laura Hart, continue to pray for the Cooper and the Hart family. Thank you for your prayers and your support. Praying for all those that are being challenged or suffering through the coronavirus 19, amen, virus pandemic, personally, physically, directly, or indirectly. Continue to pray for you, you, and especially you. Also, amen, let us remember that the free drive through free testing is being conducted by the Lyons County Health Department. You can dial the number 229-33352. Five seven that's two two nine three 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 five two five seven. You'll be given an appointment time and a PUI number when you call. You can also register online at covid one nine dot dph dot ga dot gov. That's covid the number one nine dot dph dot ga dot gov. The client will need to complete the information on the screen as outlined, and you will get a PUI number as well as an appointment time. You will need an email address to receive the results uh, information or a smartphone device. We wanted to let you know that this is an alternative instead of calling on the phone and waiting online to get your free testing scheduled. Test only takes less than five minutes and they're being conducted by the Lowndes County Health Department located here in Valdosta at 206 South Patterson Street. Amen, that's at 206 South Patterson Street, downtown Valdosta, Georgia. Amen, we pray that you continue to be safe and follow all the guidelines that have been outlined by, amen, the local health department and the CDC, amen, that you will continue to wear your mask, continue to wash your hands, continue to keep your social distance. 
And I know today is, amen, Super Bowl Sunday, but amen, we pray that you will exercise, amen, some diligence, amen, and some safety during this time that you will, amen, celebrate safely, amen, and do it, amen, according to the guidelines that have been established. At this time, amen, we're going to, amen, let you uh, highlight one of our very own members that's doing some great things in the community, and so we wanted to highlight him on this morning and share with you just, amen, a portion of, amen, the uh, service that he's doing in our community, and that is none other than our very own minister here at uh, Mount Carey, Brother Edward uh, McDougall. At this time, we just want to show you a clip of a highlight of what he's doing in our community. I became totally disabled. Um, I always worked in the public service. I did 21 years in the United States Army and 28 years at um, Georgia Department of Correction. But on March 31st, my life took a turn. Um, I became un undeployable. I became 100% uh, disabled. So with that in mind, I was trying to find a way that I can help God people reach out to. So um, I called the director of LAMP, which is our Shima planners and asked her, did she have anything I can do down at LAMP? And she said, sure, so she invited me down. I came down, took a tour, liked what I saw, and I began to volunteer. I saw people that I knew, I saw friends, I saw relatives that come through their program that was homeless out here on the street, but LAMP helped them have successful stories. I saw people from homeless come here, get a job, find time, find stable houses, and be successful in community and be a productive citizen. And that would inspire me to continue to come back. With LAMP, the thing I like the most is that you can tell the people doing this from their heart. And Bible said that if a man see their brother or sister in need, and they felt that by a companion, and so much you did it to him. So I wanted to be a blessing to the people within this community. And LAMP, I find that I'm able to do that through LAMP. And see, lamp, lamp, they not just by hand out, they do a hand up, which um, they look all into the story. They find out why, what made you become homeless? Why are you homeless? And then those barriers that stopped you for being successful, those barriers that made you become homeless, lamp have a program to push you in to help you, whether it be drug addiction, whether it be marriage, whether it be counseling, whatever you need, they help you find a stable job. Then once you get a stable job, good income, they can put you into rapid rehousing, find you a house. And not only when they do that, once they do get you out in the community, they just gonna leave you out there. What they do, they go back and they check on you. And it's something that I really like and I love being a part of. And one thing I say is saying, you teach a man, you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. But you teach him how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. And that's what some of them, to me, is all about. Helping people, help themselves. What's my purpose? What is it, Lord? What's my purpose? What is it, Lord, that you want me to do? Humble myself to you. I do what you want me to do. I chose to take a stand. My life is in your hands. I took self out of the way before the throne of grace. I lay spirit dwelled in me. 
so I can sing my purpose. Oh, yeah. What's my purpose? Questioning him. What is it, Lord? What's my purpose? What is it, Lord, that you want me to do? Humble myself to you. Lord, I'll do whatever it is that you want me to do. I chose to take a stand, my life is in your hand. All of my steps speak to me, Lord, I want to be all that I can be. I'm here to serve you, Lord, show me. My purpose, hear me tell him, show, show me. me, oh yeah. Tell me what you want me to do. Show me, show me, oh, 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 oh yeah. What you want me to do. You gotta ask him, show me. Show me, show me, Lord, I, I'll do what you, you want me to. Show me, oh yeah, Lord, I'll do. Said I do your will. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. You got to answer, Lord. Show me. Lord, I do. Lord, I do. I do your will. Your will. Whatever you want me to do. Whatever you want me to do, Jesus. Show I'm here to 
to serve you, Lord. Show me, just want to know my, my purpose. Oh, yeah. Lord, show me your will. All I want to know is your purpose. Amen. That ought to be our prayer on this blessed Sunday morning, that God will show us his will and let us know our purpose. To God be the praise, to God be the glory, to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. On this blessed morning, to our ministerial staff here at Mount Calvary, to their spouses on this morning, to my lovely spouse on this morning, lady, Evelyn Dye and Vincent, to our deacons, deaconess, mother, saints, and friends, to all of God's people and your respective places. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord to lift his name up, to give him all the praise and all of the glory and all the honor on this morning. God has been good to us. Well, we ought to be glad about it. Amen. I said, the Lord been good to us, and we certainly ought to be glad about it. Amen. We want to share with you what the Lord has laid nearest to our hearts on this morning out of Psalms, the 46th chapter of Psalms 46, Psalms 46 and verse number one, amen, down through verse number five. It said, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God and the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. And God, we give you glory. We give you honor on this blessed Sunday morning. Thank you, Father, that our eyes came open and we saw a brand new day. Thank you, Lord, that you just kept us all week long, oh, Father God. Thank you that we had a mind to come and worship on this morning. Thank you that we had a place to come and worship. Thank you for the place that's called Mount Calvary on this morning. And God, we thank you for these your people that are seeing, hearing, and have I been mean, experiencing this broadcast, this telecast, this morning worship experience on this morning, Father. And Father, we pray that their coming would not be in vain. But God, you would reach out and you would touch the every area of their lives. That they stand in the need of a miracle, a blessing, oh God, a breakthrough, a healing. Whatever it may be, oh Father God, we pray that you will heal, set free, and deliver right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, that your power and your glory would touch them, oh God. From the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, oh Father God. Just move by all their lives, oh Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we just pray you do a great work even now, Lord Jesus. We pray now, Lord, you give them a word they stand in the need of right now, Father God. Give me preaching and teaching power that I may decrease and increase in your power and your anointing. Father, keep me near the cross that you would get the praise, that you would get the glory, and that you would get the honor, Father. We pray right now. Have your way, O oh God, and we'll thank you. We'll thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen and amen. God bless you, amen. We thank God for you and for you tuning in to the Greater Mount Care Missionary Baptist Church on this day. I want to share with you, amen, from this subject on this morning, amen. Jesus, take the wheel, amen. Jesus, take the wheel, amen. I said, Jesus, take the wheel. I didn't say nobody else's name, but I said, Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah, the word of God, let us know that God is our refuge and he is our strength. A very present help, what in the time of trouble? Amen. I know somebody know, amen, that the Lord is a very present help in the time of trouble. And then the last verse says, God is in the midst of her, and shall she shall not be moved. God shall what? Help her in that right early. Amen. I said, God shall help her in that right early. God is a present help in the time of trouble. He shall help us in that right early. Amen. God will come to our rescue. I come to tell you on this morning, Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah, Psalms 25 and 5 reminds us on this morning that lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the God of my what salvation, 
on thee do I wait all the day. Yeah, thou is the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all of the day. Ain't no amen harm waiting on the Lord. Because while he is, amen, the God, amen, will come, amen, not when you want him, but he'll come right on time. Yeah, I come to tell you what does Jesus take the wheel mean on this one. I'm glad you asked that question. Jesus take the wheel is a request. For the divine intervention of God. It is sometimes used seriously and sometimes used humorously, amen, in different, amen, occasion. The expression, however, was, amen, popularized and expanded by a 2005 song by Carrie Underwood, the Christian country song, song of the same title, Jesus Take the Wheel. The song tells the story of a woman who lost control of her car when driving home and prays for Jesus to literally, figuratively, stir her life. Yeah, to stir her life. Jesus, take the wheel. In other words, take it from my hands. Because I can't do this on my own. Amen. Anybody feel that way on this morning? That Jesus, take the wheel. Take it from my hand. Because why I can't do it on my own. Own. It means that, amen, she said in this song, literally, amen, and figuratively that he, she needed him to stir her life, amen, to, amen, be in charge and be in control of her life. Like other religious-based, amen, interjections or exclamations such as Jesus Christ or God help me, Jesus take the wheel, can be uttered, amen, or written genuinely, ironically, in aspiration or excitement as one who has lost control over themselves, exhaustion, anger, or resignation. In some sense, it is used as an earnest prayer. I say an earnest prayer for divine help when one feels helpless or at a loss. My, my, someone said, my daughter's in surgery. Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. Also is used as an expression used to convey a proposition of letting things happen as they may. In other words, Jesus, the wheel. A phrase for one term, Jesus, take the wheel. It is used in a bad situation where you call out, amen, to be able to get through your problem. I don't know about you, but if you have never had a situation in your life on this morning, amen, keep on living, and amen, you'll come to a road, a point in your life when you'll have to cry out and say, Jesus, take the wheel. When things go away, amen, and, we're, and we can they no longer take, amen, what's happening around you, so you ask for the higher power Jesus take the wheel. I come to tell you, he is that higher power, amen, that can really take control of your life. If you got, amen, trouble in your life on this morning, I declare and decree unto you that you need to cry out to the Lord and say, Jesus, take the wheel. And it all seems to be falling apart. Nothing is working out right. Amen. Depression sets in. Those you love and care about and depend on and trust in let you down. Then, uh, then one well-meaning person comes to you and say, don't worry, God is in control. Well, if God is, why is there so much turmoil in my life? Or uh, much like the Carol Underwood song, we are, amen, doing everything on our way, enjoying our lives, living our lives. And then we are in trouble, and yet, well, yeah, Jesus, take the wheel. And our expectation is that for God to fix it for us. When we say, Jesus, take the wheel, our expectation is God to come in and intervene and fix it for us. I come to tell you, he'll fix it for you. Even though the statement, God is in control, sounds good. Does what we say actually get seen in how we live our lives? I say, even though the statement of God take control sounds good, uh, but does it really say, actually get seen in how God, I and mean, how we see God in our lives? Jesus, take the wheel, take it from my hands, because I can't do this all on my own. See, what's wrong with some people, they think they got everything under control, but you need to, amen, know that God is the one that you need to let have control. Yeah, because, amen, you done messed up from the floor up, but God can change some things for you. Yeah, because I can't do this on my own. I'm, I'm letting go. So give me one more chance. Give me one more chance to save me from this road that I'm on. Amen. Jesus can save you from the road that you're on. And Jesus, take 
the wheel. Yeah, if you earnestly cry out to God and say, Jesus, take the wheel. This is, of course, from a popular song by the singer we said earlier on America, used to be on America Out of Carrie Underwood. The song, if you're not familiar with it, is about that young girl we talked about earlier. They meant that was on some bad roads and made some bad mistakes. Amen. Can I get the witness on this morning? That all of us, amen. Can I say all of us uh, have made some bad decisions and made some bad, been on some bad roads and some bad mistakes in life. And sometimes you can think you're riding down a good road and there'll be a pothole in that road even though you can't see it. Amen. Me and my wife was somewhere on last night we were going and we turned on the road. Amen. And then all of a sudden, boom, amen, we hit a pot, amen, in the road. We didn't see it. We didn't expect it, but it came up on us. But come to tell you, amen, but you got to know who can charge and who can take the wheel for you when you hit those pot, amen, holes in the road of life. Yeah, you're going to hit them, amen. You didn't plant them. You didn't, ex amen, you didn't put them there, but they just came your way. But amen, but even in that, you can cry out to the Lord, Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah, this story tells us about a young lady that's coming home for Christmas and hits a patch of ice and with her baby in the car when she begins to slide all over the place. In act of desperation, she cries out, Jesus, take the wheel. Amen. The young girl is in the song has reached, amen, a breaking point. And some of you this morning, amen, in your lives, you have reached a breaking point. Amen. You have gone so far. Amen. You have stayed so long. You have stood, amen, in the gap so long. You at your breaking point. But I come by to tell you, cry out to the Lord on this morning and say, Jesus, take the wheel. We we'll all come to these moments in our lives. We we'll all come to these moments ourselves in our lives. Yes, yeah, some of us we face these moments on a regular basis. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's the illness that has struck us or a loved one. Many people deal with addiction or have suffered through the effects of the addiction of others. Some have insurmountable debts. Some have stress pressures in their daily living. Some have physical, mental, emotional, and social challenges beyond a doctor's care. Some have crises that are crucial to a life and death dilemma. Even in these times of this pandemic, many families have faced loss in so many ways from loved ones, to home, to jobs, to finances, simply the stability of life itself. Yeah, in some, it may be an overwhelming life with cares and stresses more than you can handle on this morning. The struggles of raising a family, sometimes without the help, support of love from others, uh, financial and emotional burdens just too much to bear, health problems that can destroy your future unemployment or a dead-end job, a misspent youth. Uh, you feel, amen, like your future is being ruined. But cry out to the Lord on this morning and say, Jesus, take the wheel. Whatever it may be, my brothers and sisters, there's a moment in all of our lives when all hope seems to hang on a thread. When it happens, amen, when happiness and all that is good in our lives seems to fade almost to black. And it's, it's that moment that all hope seems to be gone and all hope seems to be lost because the moment of truth is also a moment of choice. Can I say that again this morning? The moment of truth, amen, is also a moment of choice. What am I saying to you this morning? You got to choose faith or fear. Yeah, I said you got to choose faith or fear, trust or despair. Jesus or yourself. Yeah, you got to make a choice, a moment of choice. What choice would you make on this morning? It does seem like an easy answer sitting behind the pulpit or in a church pew, but things get much complicated in real life situations. And these moments of choice might be a little more different to make. Amen. And sometimes the choice is not simply a choice, but it requires action. I say sometimes it's not simply a choice, but it requires action. In other words, why sit ye here? and die. Why can't you can't we can't afford not to do anything. We can't afford to do nothing. We got to get up from where we're at. We got to make a choice. We got to make a decision. We got to make a moment. We got to make a moment. There's a moment of choice in our lives. We got to make up our minds. Are we going to sit here in our mess? Are we going to sit here in our dilemma? Are we going to sit here in our failures and our faults? Amen. And our mistakes and our misery. What are you going to do about our situation? Don't you sit there and die on this morning my brothers and sisters but I come to tell you you need to cry Jesus take the wheel yeah Lord take the wheel I'm tired of stirring this wheel but you need to take control and take charge of it sometimes you are the one who has made amen you got you got to be the one sometimes you are the one who has to make the move can I say it again 
Can I say that again this morning? Sometimes you are the one who has to make the move. Yeah, you are the one who needs to make the move. Jesus only spontaneously healed people a few times in the New Testament. Check it out. I said Jesus only spontaneously healed people a few times in the New Testament. But most of the time, they came to Jesus. You'll catch that later. I say Jesus, amen, only spontaneously healed people a few times in the New Testament. But most of the time, you look in the record, look, check it out for yourself. Most of the time, the people came to Jesus. What am I saying to you this morning? Amen. You looking, amen, for God to come to you, but you need to come to him. They had to make their move of faith to Jesus. They had to make their move of faith to Jesus. We remember the woman with the issue of blood. And Jarius, they made a move of faith to Jesus. I say they made a move of faith. They made a move. They made a move. They made a move. Can I get that to you this morning? They made a move. Women and the woman with the issue of blood for all those years, sick, weak, broke, and sick, and tired of being sick and tired of being sick. Yeah, she made a move even if it cost her life because in that day she was considered unclean where she wasn't supposed to be around anybody. But she made a move. She reached out and touched the hymn of his garment. She forgot about her condition and she thought about the condition changer. Y'all don't hear me? Amen. She pushed, amen, beyond the crowd. Pushed beyond what, amen, what the law was and what she, amen, people would say about her. But she just made up in her mind, say, I got to make a move because I need Jesus to take the wheel. I got to make a move and I got to get to him. I, I could just touch the hem of his garment. I will be made whole. Listen, I come to tell somebody this morning, make a move, make a move, Make a move. I got to get out of here, but make a move. Jairus forgot about his status. He forgot about who he was in the community, in the neighborhood, in the country. In the, he forgot about his position, forgot about his wealth. And he made a move even after he got the news that his child had even died. But she, he had enough faith to still keep on moving. Y'all ain't caught that yet. He kept on making a move. He kept moving by faith and not by what he heard, but by faith he moved. That he didn't care if his daughter died. He knew if he made a move to Jesus. Why? Jesus, when Jesus got there, everything will be all right. He made a move, make a move, make a move, make a move. I come to tell somebody out there, amen, on this morning, you need to make a move and say, Jesus, take the will. I told you earlier that Jesus only came, amen, and spontaneously and healed people a few times, but most of the people came to Jesus. I come to tell you, ain't, no wrong, ain't nothing wrong with coming to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let down your proudness. Let down, amen, your sophistication. Forget about, amen, your background and who you are and who you think you might be and make a move and come to Jesus because, amen, if you just let him have the wheel, everything will be all right. Yeah, we must, we must come and let us know we also must make the movement of faith on this morning at the movement of choice. I, I said we almost make the movement of faith at the movement of choice. We are the ones who must cry out to Jesus. Yeah, we must be the one that cry out to him. So a small move of faith, yeah, a small move of faith, a cry, a hand reaching out can result into a life-changing altercation, amen, for the Lord. We talked about how David placed 100% of his faith in God when he faced Goliath. But sometimes a small act of faith can result in a gigantic changes for deliverance, breakthrough healing, and for all those things to turn around in our favor. Just a small act of faith. God is such a good God that a small act of faith combined with an abundance of God's grace can result in a giant slaying, amen, change in our life. I just put God, amen, amen, just a small act of faith and abundance of God's grace can change your night into day. Yeah, I say amen, amen, abundance of grace and a small act of faith can change your valley experience to a mountaintop victorious dance. Yeah, I come to tell you, act also, we can not allow fear to prevent us from making that act of faith. We got to move out, amen, beyond the amen fear, but we got to move to what, what God will have us to move with. Uh, I will say to you, amen, to know that this important fact that fear and faith are enemies. I said fear and faith are our enemies. We cannot allow our fears of making the movement of faith prevent us from making that movement. I say we cannot allow fear to cause us not to move by faith. We cannot, amen, fear the reaction of Jesus or the reaction of other folks around us or the situation or the circumstance. But we must, amen, step out on faith 
amen, and move by faith and not by fear. Taking a big risk, but by taking that risk and making that moment of faith, these people, amen, receive a big reward. The woman with the issue of blood, Jairus and David, receive a big reward from the God that they serve. We too, amen, might feel like we are too far gone to receive help on this morning. We think our problem or situation is too advanced. And that's been happening for too long, and there's nothing that we can be done. We have done some pretty bad stuff in the past, and we are far too ashamed to call on the name of Jesus. But even if we did, we are not too dirty to be cleansed up. We have been trapped in sickness and depression far too long, and we need to be freed. I say to you this morning, the enemy is trying to get us confused, but amen, that is a completely lie that you have not gone too far, and you have not stayed too long. That is, amen, this morning a complete, totally unequivocal, amen, false statement that God can go where, amen, to the lowest place and lift you up. He can stretch out his arm and bring you back in. There is no, there is no sickness that Jesus cannot cure. There is no addiction that he cannot break. There is no problem that he cannot solve. There is no soul that is too dirty to be cleansed by Christ. There is nothing that you think that might, amen, you have done in this situation or circumstance that you might be in that Jesus will not come to your beckoning call. I come to tell you, just call him up and tell him what you want. Uh, Jesus uh, is waiting. Jesus uh, is calling. Jesus is begging us to make that moment of faith uh, because there comes a moment and a moment where we would do not know where do we do going to turn to. I said there comes a moment, amen, of faith uh, because when there comes that moment of faith, uh, amen, a moment where we do not know where to turn to. But I come to tell you, you can turn to the Lord. Uh, Jesus, take the will. We must hang on to that thread of hope. Uh, we must hold on to that mustard seed of faith. There comes a moment and just around the corner if we have faith enough to see that Jesus will work it out. Yeah, there is hope for the helpless, rest for the weary, love for the brokenhearted. There's grace and forgiveness. There's mercy and healing. Healing, amen. He'll meet you wherever you're at. Cry out to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus. I say he'll meet you wherever that you're at because he's that kind of God. Because we need to say, Lord Jesus, take the wheel. Paul was shipwrecked out on the sea, but he told Jesus to take the wheel. Peter was sinking in the water, but he told Jesus to take the wheel. Paul and Silas was in prison, but he told Jesus to take the wheel. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus was a man, a tax collector lost in sin, but he told Jesus to take the wheel. Two blind men that could not see, but they told Jesus to take the wheel. The woman at the well Amen, but say, man, the woman at the well, but she told Jesus to take the wheel. I come to testify this morning that Charles Vincent was lost, messed up from the floor, broke till, amen, he was a joker, but didn't have a guard on his side. But one day I told Jesus to take the wheel way back yonder in March the 5th, 1979, on a Monday afternoon about 3 o'clock p.m. I'll never forget the day I told Jesus to take the wheel. And somebody in my cavalry on this morning they had that moment, amen, made a move of faith over fear where they needed him in a hurry and they told Jesus to take the wheel. I don't know about you on this morning but you need to tell him to take the wheel because if he take the wheel everything will be all right. If he take the wheel amen he'll move you in the right direction. Well you may about to make the wrong turn if you let him take the wheel he'll let you make the right turn. Well you might be backing up in the wrong neighborhood if you let him take the wheel he'll pull you out of the ghetto and the bar amen the bottom of the pit. I come to tell you if you let Jesus take the wheel you might be going the wrong way down amen the road uh, but if you just call and let Jesus take the wheel he'll do a u-turn for you and put you in the right direction and put your foot on a solid ground uh, that amen you'll know that everything will be all right uh, I come by to tell somebody let Jesus take the wheel on this morning be still and he says and be still in the same song 46 10 and 11 he said be still and know that I am God uh, I come to tell you, be still and know that he is God. Uh, and he said, I will be exalted among the heathen, and I will be exalted in the earth. Uh, the Lord of hosts is with us. Uh, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Uh, in other words, he is our help. 
He is our help uh, in the time of trouble. Uh, and let us know that God said, be still and know that he is God. Uh, why? Because Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, uh, trust in the Lord uh, with all thy heart uh, and lean not to thy own understanding. Uh, but in all thy ways, uh, acknowledge him uh, and he shall direct your path. Uh, I come to tell you, just trust in him uh, and wait on him uh, and he will come uh, and see about you. Uh, Jesus, uh, take the wheel. Uh, here I am, Lord, uh, down here on earth, uh, trying to do the best I can, uh, trying to do the right thing, uh, trying to go in the right direction, uh, trying to love everybody, uh, trying to treat everybody right. Uh, but sometimes, Lord, uh, it gets troubling sometimes. Uh, sometimes, Lord, uh, the night get too dark, uh, and sometimes the day uh, get too long, uh, and sometimes the wind uh, blow too hard. Uh, but I'm down here, Lord, uh, trying to do the best I can, uh, and Lord, I need you to take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. I come to tell somebody as I come to a close on this morning. I come to tell somebody, Deacon Roy Hart, to look up and see and sense your help that comes from the Lord. Look up and see and sense your help that come from the Lord. For the sons and all of my help come from the Lord, which made heaven and earth, that all of my help come from from the Lord. Anybody feel that way? That all, that all, that all my help come from the Lord which made heaven and earth. I pray today this is a new day and that you make up your mind and you make up your mind. I say make up your mind. Make up your mind to consume your thought that God is the greatest God. Of God is the greatest God of all the universe. I come to tell you how somebody said this morning morning uh, that Tom Brady uh, was the goat. Uh, somebody said uh, that Mr. Holmes uh, or the amen or the team uh, amen the Kansas City team uh, that he's on his way to be the goat. Uh, but I come to tell you uh, that I know who the goat is this morning. Uh, I know who the greatest uh, of all is uh, and that's Jesus Christ. Uh, he's the goat. Uh, I come to tell you uh, Jesus uh, is the greatest of all. Uh, yes he is. Uh, there's nothing. Uh, there's nothing uh, too difficult for him. Uh, there's nothing uh, too hard for God. Uh, there's nothing uh, that you can say about him uh, that make me doubt him. Uh, there's nothing uh, you can say about him uh, that make me turn away from him. Uh, there's nothing uh, you can say about him uh, that does, amen, change uh, my thought of him. Uh, but I come to tell you uh, on this morning, uh, I come to let you know uh, there's nothing uh, too difficult for God. Uh, there's no problem uh, that God cannot solve. Uh, there's nothing uh, that God cannot turn around. Uh, nothing. Uh, if he says so, uh, it is so. Uh, and you can look up uh, and you can expect it. Uh, I don't know uh, how you feel on this morning, uh, but I got to go to my seat. Uh, but before I go to my seat uh, on this morning, uh, some of you uh, are driving uh, down the road uh, of life uh, and trying to make uh, your decision uh, where you're going to go. Uh, but I come to tell you uh, on this morning uh, that if you're driving uh, and you can't get out of it. All you got to do is say, Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. Here I am, Lord. I need you to stir me in the right direction. Here I am, Lord. I need you to drive for me. Here I am, Lord. I need you to lead me and guide me. Oh, thy great Jehovah. Here I am. Rock with me. Ride with me. Jesus, take the wheel. I've been hanging on by a thread a long time, but here I am, here I am, it's me, oh Lord, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer, it's me, oh Lord, I need you, it's me, oh Lord, I'm coming to you, it's me, oh Lord, here I am, I need you for my family, I need you for my children, I need you for my finances. I need you for my job. I need you for my body. I need you for my mind. I need you for my soul. I need you for my heart. I need you. Lord, Lord, 
Jesus, Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, I'm getting weak. I'm getting tired. I'm getting wounded. I'm getting sad. But I need you. I need you. In a day like this, I need you. I need you to ride with me. I need you to go with me. I need you to hang in there with me. I need you. Yeah. Yeah. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Ride with me. Ride with me. Take the wheel. You take control. You be the pilot. And I'll be the co-pilot. I say you be the pilot. And I'll be the co-pilot. Ride on. Ride on. Ride on. Ride on. When it get rough. Ride on. When it get hard. Ride on. When it get lonely. Ride on. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We got to get out of here, y'all. We got to get out of here, y'all. But Jesus, 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 take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. Lord, I'm riding down the road and I can't see my way the storm the storm the storm of life is raging the storm of life is about to take over the storm of life got me burning Lord I've been riding this way a long time but here I am here I am here I am here I am. I can't go farther. Here I am. I'm praying. Here I am. I'm calling out. Here I am. I'm waiting on you. Here I am. I'm struggling. Here I am. I'm crying. But Jesus, 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 take the wheel. Take the wheel. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Jesus, take the wheel. If you take the wheel, everything, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everything, everything will be all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If you take the wheel, you'll put clapping in my hand. A praise, yes, sir. a praise yes, sir. in my voice, Jesus. Jesus, take the wheel. Yes, sir. Take the wheel. Take the wheel. Take the wheel. Take the wheel. In the midnight hours of our lives, the Lord is our refuge and our help in the time of trouble. He's our strength. He's our fortress. He's everything we need. And somebody today, you need Jesus. To take your will. And I guarantee you to give it to him. If you just give it to him, he'll take it. He'll do more with it than you could ever think you could do with it. That God take control of your life. Jesus, take the will. Get it out of your hand. And let God take control of your every situation and your every circumstance. If you don't know the Lord and the partner of your sin, and you haven't had a chance to meet Jesus the Christ. This is your day. This is your time to say, Jesus, take the wheel of my life. Lord Jesus, let's pray me. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. Forgive me for all my sins and my transgression. Lord, I receive you into my heart. Save me. I want to live for you. I want to live a life for you. That you will get praise. That you will get glory out of my life. Forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. Make me whole. I want to be your child. I accept you in my heart, mind, soul, and spirit. Redeem me, Lord. Take me as your child. In Jesus' name, it is simple as that. 
that you are now a part of the body of Christ. And he will save you. I say Jesus will save you. And he will keep you. Jesus, take the wheel.
and we give it all to you, God. Withholding nothing, we give it unto you. At this time, we, we ask you that you prepare for our communion service on this blessed Sunday morning. Amen. Our communion service, we ask that, amen, Deacon uh, Royal Heart would come at this time to read our communion scripture out of 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Amen. 1 Corinthians 11, chapter, starting at the 23rd verse. I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, for which is for you. Do this in memorance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this. Whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whatever you eat, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he come. Therefore, whosoever eat the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats the bread and drink of the cup. God's word for God's people. Amen. Thank you. Dig your heart for reading our communion scripture. We ask you to prepare your hearts, amen, to receive the Lord's Supper on this morning. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this sacred time. We thank you for what you did for us on the cross of Calvary, that you gave us a right to the tree of life, eternal life, and you gave us victory here on planet earth. And God, we thank you for that right now. And Father, we pray now, Lord, that you will sanctify these elements that will be used for your glory, the bread and the wine. And God, we do this in remembrance of what you did for us on the cross of Calvary. And we thank you for it. And we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. And the same night, he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and said, this is my body that shall be broken for you on the cross of Calvary. Let us all eat together. Same night he took the cup and he said, this is my blood. And he prayed for when he rested and said, this is my blood that shall be shared for you on the cross of Calvary. Let us all drink together. Amen. God bless you. Heaven keep you as I pray. Certainly, amen, I read earlier the uh, people that we asked for special prayer. And certainly we want to, amen, read those names again and make sure that we didn't forget anybody. But certainly, you know, on this week, uh, me and my wife or myself, we've, amen, gotten several phone calls from different people, amen, saying that, you know, that people have passed in their families and whether, whether it was an aunt or uncle or a sister-in-law or, amen, a cousin or someone. But, you know, death is certainly raging in the land. And if you notice right here in the city of Valdosta, just about every day, amen, every day someone, amen, is passing from uh, the coronavirus pandemic. And it behooves us, amen, to take heed, amen, to be attentive to what's going on in our world and our nation and take care of yourself, amen. Don't put yourself in that predicament. Try to do the best you can to stay, amen, as healthy as you can and away from, amen, those type of situations where you can get, Amen. Infected with the uh, coronavirus. Amen. I didn't say then live your life, but I said be careful. Amen. Be amen. Caught under the fact where you're at and what you're doing and who you're with. Amen. 
that you may live and thrive even after, amen, this is over with, amen. So we want to encourage you to continue to pray one for another. Those that are losing, amen, loved ones, for one reason or another, pray for them. We say pray for mother, amen, Lily Mike Duggar, mother, amen, Elizabeth Brown, minister Edward Mike Duggar, brother Robert Mike Duggar, sister Madison Mike Duggar, Deaconess Bertha Neal, and sister Joanne Kaye, and brother Andy Hard, and minister Eric Curtin, and brother Arthur, Arthur Barton, and Brother Reginald Black, continue to pray for those one name by name and those that we don't have listed that stand in the need of prayer. We're praying for them that God will intervene in their behalf. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise and God, we just give you glory. And God, we just give you honor on this blessed Sunday morning. We thank you for this worship service. We thank you that God, we can let you take the wheel for us, that you can drive our vehicle of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that this word have helped somebody along the way to learn how to turn it over to you and let you take the wheel, let you take control, let you stir them in the right direction. Father, we pray now, Lord, for those that are suffering during this pandemic. Pray for those that are sick in the hospital, for whatever it may be, oh God. We pray if they're home, we pray for them. We pray for those that are in prison, those that are in the hospital, nursing home, prison wall, wherever they may be, oh God. We pray for them even right now, Lord Jesus. You can go where we can't go. God, you can do what we can't do. And God, we pray now, Lord, that you would just move in a mighty way. Look on the bereaved family today, God, wherever they may be. In whatever situation or circumstance they may be, God, lift them up right now. God, lift up their heads. Dry the tears from their eyes. Comfort them as you know how, God. You know what they're standing in need of. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray for these on the prayer list. Pray for these that on the special pray for these that we don't even know about God we pray that you would just do a work even now Lord Jesus in their lives God that you'll give them a testimony that you'd heal them that you lifted them up that you turned things around for them and that you made a way out of no way and God we pray Lord you continue to bless each and every person that is hearing and seeing this telecast and broadcast continue to bless the Mount Calvary church family those that are connected with us oh God families and friends oh God we pray for them today God that you will move in their behalf in the mighty name of Jesus God, just bless us one by one, name by name, situation by situation, and circumstance by circumstance. Let your healing, your virtue, your power touch us right now, God. From the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Bless us what we stand in the need of right now, God. Keep us, Lord. Keep us covered under your blood and under your power and under your anointing. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we give your name to praise. And God, we give your name to glory. And we give your name to honor. We thank you for it, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest rule in the Bible. That's henceforth, now, and forever. And all of God, people say amen. Remember, you don't have any trouble, but all you need is faith in God. Until the next time, be blessed and highly favored of the Lord.